good afternoon chair, uh, chair sir and good afternoon all the dignitaries on the dais and uh, good afternoon all the ladies and gentlemen present uh, today in this gathering it's my privilege uh, uh, that i have been honored with uh, to present here in this august gathering uh, regarding uh, the energy transition and the digital technologies that can move help us to move forward into the future uh, i i represent uh, dhamra lng terminal private limited uh, this is a, a subsidiary of adani total uh, private limited this is joint venture 50 50% joint venture between adani and total uh, we are setting up a 5 million ton per annum uh, uh, lng regasification terminal on the east coast in odisha uh, which can be again increased to 10 mmtp uh, considering that today our capacity is around 43 MTPA in India for regasification terminal, so we will be around 10. We will be contributing 10 percent, and if we go by our total capacity is already bought by uh, GL and IOCL. IOCL has bought uh, nearly 60 percent of our capacity, and uh, GL has already bought 30 percent of our capacity. So we are almost 90 percent sold out before starting pro uh, production, and we expect that we will be starting to produce uh, uh, in the month of January. so coming to our uh, uh, topic today so during this energy transition we all know that uh, lng is going to be crucial and we are into the uh, this sector and uh, uh, digital also digital transformation is quite important and uh, definitely we have to uh, uh, you can say use it to move forward so my topic today is that how we can use digital transformation in maintenance and inspection i have Uh, i heard uh, today from morning many uh, presentations they were mostly on exploration and production and i am mostly into the downstream sector so uh, uh, and maintenance inspection uh, maintenance and inspection that too not from operation background so i will uh, be more uh, uh, going into how digital transformation will help us in mandi so first going to what has been till today what has sorry for the interruption interruption uh, now uh, let us uh, i'll go into the history of maintenance as such industrial revolution has started in 1770 as such industry has started to co come up and uh, by 1860 uh, maintenance concept of maintenance has started actually maintenance concept of maintenance was not there till 1860 even actually the equipments were running they failed and they are thrown out and then replaced Uh, in 1860s, with uh, the uh, boilers exploding and uh, taking lives, then German TVB was first made. So I have uh, tried to draw a curve from uh, 1900 to 2020. If you see that uh, after almost there is a paradigm shift in 1930s with World War, and uh, the run to fail concept has been replaced with corrective maintenance. People tried to find out uh, when the equipment was going out. and they again actually tried to rebuild the machine without replacing the machine so that is a corrective maintenance concept that came in and uh, by the end of world war 2 uh, the concept of uh, preventive maintenance came into picture and it was initially started by uh, henry ford he started to in the automobiles he started to say that you maintain it uh, at a check uh, carry out regular checks and maintain it so that it runs for a longer time and that the preventive maintenance concept started to gain momentum and by the time 1980s preventive maintenance has already taken up almost 75 to 80% of the industrial sector so now also uh, the uh, preventive maintenance is already in the dominant uh, stage when i started my career in 1998 uh, i we were looking at predictive maintenance uh, condition monitoring and then going to do the predictive maintenance but uh, unfortunately till date uh, predictive maintenance has not taken up the pace the way the corrective maintenance at one point of time has taken up or the uh, preventive maintenance has taken up we were uh, thinking that probably predictive maintenance will take up condition based maintenance will take up and uh, regular scheduled maintenance will subside but till date predictive maintenance has come to almost at around 8 to 10% level not more than that the preventive maintenance has, has re reduced little bit but it still is 75% around so we have to see how we can actually uh, uh, increase the predictive maintenance so that the scheduled outages because uh, in these uh, oil and gas sector the industries are capital intensive 
so any downtime for downtimes are mostly for maintenance or inspection so how to reduce those downtimes that is where uh, our problem is uh, there so how to improve so predictive maintenance reduces the time downtime the preventive maintenance is scheduled outages always increases the downtime so that is how it, and i am hopeful with the advent of technology like uh, if you see the increase in data processing last 20 30 years the data processing has increased like anything the cpu speed increased from 5 uh, megahertz in 1980s to around 5 gigahertz today per core i am saying per core into multiple cores then it is actually much more and with quantum mechanics uh, quantum uh, computing i think it will probably have a leap further and main is the internet data transfer speeds that has come up data transfer speed if you see in uh, 1990 it was around 10 kbps we can 100 mbps is also uh, uh, is very easy and it is quite natural nowadays so with this actually what it uh, has with uh, uh, for us for us actually uh, the technology enablers who which are the technology that will enable m and i to move from preventive maintenance to predictive maintenance or automated maintenance kind of thing many concepts are coming so uh, big data is one thing that all the data that are there actually they have to be gathered they have to be collected in a form that the processors or analytics can assess and and then help us then wireless networking there are wireless networking that is coming up with low power technologies that is very easy to low power technology so small batteries can also power a sensor for almost 6 months to transfer data smaller and powerful processors that is where the even our watch today is having a processor that can gather uh, blood pressure uh, uh, even many thing many parameters and then helps us uh, give then it it automatically gives us recommendations as well so high speed low power data transfer artificial intelligence and machine learning they are very buzzword nowadays everyone knows about it virtual reality augmented reality multifunctional sensors embedded chips cloud and solar so actually when i was making this my son actually saw this and said that papa this is like a kite so indeed this is a kite if you can use it it can actually let take us to higher heights so hmm. so what is there uh, this technology i we can leverage for mndi one is pipeline monitoring uh, right now it is almost used by many companies uh, because of wireless low power sensors and networks embedded chip artificial intelligence and it can really become iot within next 2 to 3 years internet of things pipeline monitoring we have around around the world around more than 3 million kilometers of pipelines and i hope within probably next 5 years all the pipelines uh, may become internet of things productivity optimization with the help of big data artificial intelligence cloud uh, advanced uh, cmms uh, uh, computerized maintenance management system we can optimize our maintenance productivity i am saying not operation productivity then predictive maintenance definitely the multifunctional sensors as varied small sensors with chips embedded chips big data and ai and ml i think predictive maintenance they will help us Uh, get uh, give better data and we can take data based decisions actually we need data based decisions nowadays we have many options that come up and then the actual uh, da, uh, the options are so many that we cannot take a perfect decision then remote inspection remote inspection has become a reality in some cases they are pilot projects they are undergoing because of the sensors networks embedded chips aml and internet of things then remote maintenance internet and high resolution imaging Uh, be it optical images thermal images and acoustic images they have become very uh, you can say uh, it is uh, we can we can use it in industrial use without incurring high cost so this can help us uh, in remote maintenance as well we can uh, connect to the oem representatives outside they they don't don't have to come to the site so remote maintenance can happen very easily and then risk based inspection risk based inspection we have started uh, in last 15 20 years the concept was started but uh, we are still uh, in a conservative way we are doing government regulations are also helping us right now so the risk based inspection will definitely help us to reduce the time for inspection then competency and training with virtual reality and augmented reality coming into picture and with the help of 3d uh, scanning and modeling uh, it it has to uh, reduce in cost uh, definitely the asset and the artificial intelligence cloud uh, competency and training can uh, happen in a digital way and also competency assessment can be can be carried out very easily 
then emission modeling high resolution imaging uh, uh, optical thermal and uh, acoustic resolutions are helping already so it has to be taken up in a industrial scale and with big data and asset integrity that that can be very easily modeled and uh, uh, we can easily uh, trap uh, the digital uh, uh, platform so this is good but what are the challenges that is actually there why it is not happening in m&i in the way that it has to have happened one is value proposition value proposition means the uh, if you see uh, we are setting up a 6000 crore uh, company uh, as as a capital outlay but uh, we will be having an annual maintenance cost of around only 30 crores so when we say that 30 crores and if i go into a digital initiative it may take out a large chunk of it and immediately i may not get a uh, return so it is better that if we can use it in capital phase itself uh, in this kind of initiatives it is better or uh, there can be a, a collaboration effort kind of thing between the developers and uh, the or uh, organizations then it is integration the technology has to be integrated into the system and all the silos because now different projects are coming up and they are in different different areas different departments are taking their own projects in digital transformations but they are not integrated so they have to be integrated then definitely change management is a major factor as the technology is changing so there are many difficulties and uh, you can say doubt in the mind of uh, the people who should uh, take uh, this change so change management is again a, uh, you can say challenge then cooperation among all the industries developers and uh, the uh, financiers kind of thing so this cooperation is requ required then preservation of ipr actually when we are saying all the cooperation between developer and uh, the or uh, the organizations or users then there is a, a always a risk of uh, ipr issue actually intellectual property rights issue so how that has to be preserved that also is an important thing and then definitely when the data transfer is happening so much time and with all the security issues in the cyber uh, cyber domain cyber security is another challenge so with all these challenges i i am still hopeful that the way the technology is shaping up and uh, i think the way forward is to strive and overcome the challenges together together we can uh, take up this ch uh, challenge thank you